Hello, today we have an extra long uh, installment of our Adventures of Our Carbonauts. Um, today I'm basically documenting a challenge where uh, somebody asked what's the fewest number of parts you can put on a rocket, take it to orbit above 70 kilometers, orbit once, and then land and return the carbonaut safely to the planet Kurth. Well, so this is my design. As you can see, it's got three fuel tanks and a single engine. There was no decoupler and no parachute. Um, so basically, by cutting out the decoupler and the parachute, you don't need nearly as much thrust to get into orbit, don't need nearly as much delta V, is the technical term. But of course, uh, on return, I'm going to have to try to soft land this thing using the rocket motors to cushion its landing and uh, as it turns out I'll probably use the rest of the rocket as a cushion as well but anyway this is going to be a whole like 15 minutes long because the whole point is to show a, a continuously uncut document of the whole mission so that there's no question as to how uh, awesome this um, vehicle is or uh, at least uh, <laughs> put it beyond question so that I shall not get any uh, comments back on the forum as to uh, how I cheated or I hacksawed or whatever. I mean, this is entirely a stock part vehicle. So anyway, yeah, up to uh, 12 kilometers. You've seen all this before. We're basically doing an orbital insertion. Um, normally, the ship that I'm using in these videos has four fuel tanks. This one is uh, accelerates a little faster because it has a, a lot less mass to push around. But obviously, uh, it has less... Uh, less fuel reserves, so you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can just kind of fly this by the seat of my pants. I'm running this on the um, the point one one experimental release, so what I will be doing is using the map to adjust my orbit, and I'll also be using time acceleration so I could fit a whole orbit into the 15 minutes. And of course, I've just rambled on about as many details as I can, and. Yeah, I'm going to have 15 minutes to fill, so I'm going to have to come up with some jokes. Um, as we can see, uh, Jeb is smiling and happy as usual. So, uh, yeah, because he knows everything's going fine. He's All he's concerned about is getting to orbit. Yeah, there we go. We've got an apple key of uh, 92 kilometers, so I just need to uh, basically get up as much speed as possible. Um, we'll see. Actually, I think that might be a little high because... What we're going to see is, is as I pick up to the lateral speed, the perikey or apokey will move around the planet and get higher and higher. So I'm probably going to end up with a much, much higher um, altitude orbit than I'd like. I'm just going to put that down to me not being particularly experienced with this rocket design. Uh, let's see what the burnout says. Oh, 235. Yeah, I uh, screwed that up big time. <laughs> I I mean, realistically, I probably wasted a couple of hundred meters per second delta V, which for the landing is like 20 seconds of, of loiter time. Um, so yeah, accelerate time, get myself up to the apple key so I can uh, circularize the orbit. Um, I'm just going to do this gently. I'll, I'll just line up the thing and switch back and forth from the map. This thing is a little more... Um, this turns a lot faster than the four tank version, obviously. Uh, it also means that it's less stable. I mean, you'll notice there's no stability control at all, and, and it turns out that enabling the SAS units doesn't help at all. I've not seen that it helps. I mean, it, it'll stop me spinning if I'm rolling, but that's about it. So yeah, bring it up on the map. I'm at just minimal thrust here, watching my speed creep up. Um, I'm in no rush. Uh, you can see that the apple key is right on the terminator line. I should I should probably adjust the have adjusted the um, the camera so you could see. But oh well, I'll do that for a more photogenic version. Yeah, this could take a decent amount of time. The so the parakeet is still inside the planet. You see that the orbit is plotted round, but it won't show it because you'd essentially have to hit the planet. This is. This is an orbit. It's These are all orbits, but uh, they're orbits that end up inside the planet. So by accelerating along my orbit vector at uh, apple key, I'm basically raising the perikey up higher and higher. And my target is going to be above 70 kilometers for this challenge. Um, it shouldn't be too hard. I have loads of fuel left. 
and that's good because I'm going to need you know a decent amount for a last minute uh, burn when I'm descending and the idea being that uh, I don't need variant to kill much speed. You know, if you look at the terminal velocity for the last few hundred meters, the terminal velocity is about 100 meters per second, which is less than a few seconds of thrust. So really, you do not need much fuel at all to soft land one of these things. There we go. We get the parakeet above the, the, the Earth, the atmosphere, or above the surface. We just got to keep checking back and forth until the parakeet is high enough that we do not scrape the atmosphere. And then I'm going to have to fill a little more time with more, some more inane banter about, you know, rocketry and science and all that. I don't really have many good jeb jokes. Um, 40, 50. Yeah, I could have probably done this a little faster, but frankly, I'm not. <laughs> I like to do it slowly because once you're in orbit, you have plenty of time to do these kind of things. Ah, there we go. 70 kilometers. Awesome. Cut off the engines. And now, uh, time for the time acceleration. So, did you do 50 times? You can see it. I'm going to zip around this planet and uh, enjoy the view. Um, oh, yeah. If you're doing this, you might want to switch out and enjoy the view. But frankly, I'm just interested in showing you guys that this is indeed a completely legal and valid orbit. Um, once I get back up to Apple Key, I'm going to have to get ready for my descent maneuver. So, um, again, what I'm going to do is aim for a retro burn to bring the the, peri the parakeet down into the atmosphere. I don't want to bring it all the way to zero because what you'll find is that the there's a descent. You're going to hit the atmosphere below that, and that'll actually slow you down. And the other thing is that... Um, Based on my experiments, there seems to be some sort of bug landing in water with a powered descent. I've found that it's much, much harder to land on water. So I really want to aim for land. And again, the map is going to be hugely important in making sure this happens. Okay, okay, so we got a parakeet of 17 kilometers. Let's see where it is. Oh, so it kind of looks like it's going to be over the ocean. Uh... I, I I I guess I can try and extend it out and aim to hit that next continent. So I gotta adjust this and I think what I'm gonna do is is try and burn vertically, uh, which is taking a little bit of effort because I've got time acceleration on. Um, I'm gonna aim to burn vertically a little so that uh, it'll push my. Um, apses, my nodes around the orbit rather than pushing the, the altitude and mess with the altitude. So yeah, hopefully if I, hopefully I won't need too much fuel to bring my um, periaps, my perikey around over that continent. I want to make sure it's kind of in the middle. So there, yeah, if you want to see that it's actually moving very slowly towards that next continent. We're just going to let it get around a little more. Normally, you know, when you're in orbit, uh, you don't. You should really only be burning forwards and backwards unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And this is probably not totally efficient. But really, what I'm trying to do is just move my descent point around the planet, rather than uh, get, rather than adjust my actual arrival time. Um, I see so many people that they get into orbit and then to get back they just point their the nose of the rocket at the planet and thrust and you know if you actually do the mathematics on that it turns out you need about four to five times the amount of delta v to return to the planet if you just thrust straight downwards as opposed to thrusting retrograde uh, and in fact if you're above um, about 1200 kilometers to get back to the planet you basically or if, if your altitude is above the radius of the planet right so 600 kilometers or a 1,200 kilometer radius orbit, you actually have to accelerate beyond escape velocity to return to the planet. So yeah, there's a lesson out there for all you amateur rocketeers. You absolutely, unless you really know what you're doing, you don't want to be thrusting sideways in the orbit. Yeah, so I'm getting there. I'm, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So I, I think that we're probably going to come in shallower than that because the atmosphere will slow us down, but there's enough margin for error there that I think... I, I, I'm going to just leave it at that and then accelerate time. Um, it's going to be a little more... We just, I guess I need to just uh, hope. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm committed. I, I don't know at what point, uh, if there's enough 
fuel budget for me to change it if it turns out I'm going to hit the land if I'm going to hit the ocean I'm going to time accelerate see what happens um, so that'll go pretty fast just skip around the planet you know, I, the, the time acceleration disables the controls if the time warp is faster than four times uh, I think if you accidentally if it took input about 50 times acceleration you would probably spin your rocket apart um, but yeah the other thing I'm going to do is try to just aim this thing upwards uh, and so the, the whole point is I'm going to just try and land it on the tail cone so I don't want to get it as close to vertical as possible the reason being that if it's not exactly vertical, you're going to pick up lateral velocity. And even though you might be descending slowly enough to survive, uh, the capsule might be going too fast sideways. It might bounce. It might break. So, you know, when you're trying to land on your tail cone, you absolutely want to be as um, vertical as possible. Uh, I mean, of course, this is a l vertical landing with an atmosphere. If you're landing on an airless body and you're doing a vertical powered landing, you have to spend a lot more fuel to actually kill your lateral velocity. Um, that's a... Uh, that's a whole you know, much harder problem to deal with. I know I hear that they'll be adding uh, a moon out at something about 13,000 kilometers. Uh, I can't wait to have a go landing on that thing because, and I don't know how the instrumentation is going to work. We definitely need more work on the instrumentation as it is. Oh, I hit the button a little too hard, but uh, I still have plenty of time. Oh, there's the continent there. I think I'm now below 30 kilometers. I really hope I haven't overcooked this. I hope uh, I'm, think, I'm thinking at this rate I'm going to be okay I'm still moving sideways at a couple of kilometers per second so we should yeah oh looks like it's going to be a kind of mountainous region I hope so yeah having mountains of course is going to mess up my calculations normally you would just kind of burn when you're below a kilometer but um, I'm going to have to actually make a decent judgment as to where the the ground actually is relative to my altimeter uh that would be another instrument that would be nice to have an actual altimeter a radar altimeter that um gives me distance to the ground versus you know estimated distance to the zero surface on the entire planet um yeah i'd also like to see a perikey and an, an apple key display in the top right so that I don't need to switch back and forth to the map all the time when I'm getting into orbit. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we've already had better staging. It's really good to have the good staging controls, even though I'm not using them here. But, you know, absolute props to the developers for, uh, you know, keeping this game uh, updated. When the full version comes out, I'm sure I'm going to buy it, uh, even though I am a complete cheapskate. <laughs> But uh, maybe, you know, maybe actually by the time uh, I get this comes out, I'll have made enough money off my YouTube videos <laughs> that I'll be able to uh, give it back to the developers. So anyway, yeah, we're down to a few kilometers. We are, you know, the speed is now 200, kilometer, 200 meters per second. It'll drop below about 100, uh, hopefully. You know, that's, I'm, you can see that I've got about one eighth of one tank. But really, you only need a few seconds of thrust if you do it right. Uh, it's a few seconds of absolute crazy insanity, but uh, you know, <laughs> the, you just need to get the capsule hitting the surface at below nine kilometers per second, uh, nine meters per second. Nine kilometers per second will kill anything, but yeah, nine meters per second in the capsule will make it survive. So we have lighting it up, lighting it up. Oh, ah, crap! My so yeah, that was a glitch caused by. The, the fraps thing changing file, I guess. Oh, let's try, let's try. Oh, no, no, the thrust, 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 maximum thrust. I, I really would like a better way to control this. This thrust, the the analog thrust becomes very hard. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> see, if I just cut it to zero exactly. Oh, and yes, they survive. <laughs> yes! Okay.